technical difficulties, I apologize. Oh, there we go. All right, so good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Spencer Arnold, and I'm here representing the New Heaven Reef Conservation Program and Conservation Diver. And the topic that I'm going to be talking about today is feeding preferences in the crown of thorns starfish, Acanthaster, on the coral reefs of Koh Tao, Thailand. So again, I'm going to give you guys a little bit of an introduction, although one is probably not needed. Again, these uh, crown of thorns sea stars are infamous species across coral reefs in the Indo-Pacific and indeed across their geographic range. Again, uh, in the Anthropocene, these organisms have been seen in incredibly large outbreak populations collapsing reef ecosystems, again, oftentimes where they're found. The problem with these organisms, as many of you are already well aware, in the words of, of one of the most uh, heinous and uh, uh, upsetting people to uh, environmental scientists in the modern world, is that the organisms are uh, a, a huge problem. They're, they're huge, okay? So again, uh, uh, one of the uh, well-known uh, studies on coral reef ecosystems is that the managing of crown of thorn populations is thought to actually be one of the most manageable and tangible solutions for managers to actually reduce the rates of coral coverage decline and uh, coral mortality uh, by reef managers uh, across the reefs that they're, they're in the midst of studying and trying to preserve. Um, there's an incredible volume of literature uh, surrounding these organisms, as many of you are already aware. I'm sure, again, all of you are familiar with these organisms. There's over 950 plus uh, publications that are out there, uh, again, which really speaks volumes to their impacts on these ecosystems. Um, they have, however, shown incredibly high dietary variance across uh, broad geographic ranges that they're found across. Again, and this is uh, attributed to their high dietary plasticity of sclerectinian corals. Again, they've been observed feeding on uh, species that are poorly expressed on, on some reefs, whereas in other reef regions, they seem to be feeding on uh, species or, excuse me, genera that are really well expressed on those reef ecosystems. So understanding the differences uh, across these different biogeographic regions is, is incredibly important for reef managers to be empowered to, again, best manage these populations. Um, uh, last year, uh, an assessment was made of the vast volumes of literature that have been published on the crown of thorns uh, starfish. Uh, it was a study that was conducted by Pratchett, um, and essentially what he looked at was uh, the last 30 years of literature that surrounds these organisms, and he essentially uh, based his study off of the 41 questions that were posed in a seminal study by Moran in 1986 that have largely guided crown of thorns research for the last 30 years. Essentially what he did was he, he tried to look at those questions and suggest whether or not they'd been resolved or not. Feeding preferences for crown of thorns in the Indo-Pacific was one of the questions that he looked at, and he did indeed decide that it had been firmly resolved by the literature that exists there, with Acropora being by far the most prey, uh, preferred prey preference um, or, or predated genus of uh, coral across the Indo-Pacific. So the study into the variation uh, uh, in the biogeographic uh, behavior and dietary preference is only one of eight questions, however, that still calls for further in investigation. So despite, again, his conclusions on uh, the dietary preferences of the crown of thorn sea star, it is still an incredibly important uh, area for further study, again, as they show such variance in, again, these dietary behaviors over such large spatial scales. So, oops, I skipped a slide. Um, there we go. Um, get, just to give you guys a little background of where this study was actually conducted, it was conducted on Koh Tao, Thailand. Um, uh, and since the mid-1980s, if you guys know nothing about this small 21 square kilometer island in the Gulf of Thailand, um, it's rapidly developed in the last 30 years since the paper by Moran was actually first published. Um, uh, it's now uh, one of the uh, greatest tourism hotspots, at least for diving and snorkeling, in the entire Indo-Pacific and indeed in the world. So it's an incredibly good case study when looking at anthropogenic threats um, uh, and of course associated levels of crown of thorns outbreaks, which of course are very closely linked to anthropogenic activities, which I won't go over obviously in this, uh, in this presentation. Despite the incredible volume of diving on the island of Koh Tao, again, uh, it's theorized that close to a million people uh, uh, will actually come to the island of Koh Tao a year, but that's based off slightly strange uh, 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 statistics and values. Only two publications have actually been created or exist um, on cots uh, around the island of Koh Tao. So it's pretty amazing that, again, an island that's so frequented has such a poor amount of literature about these organisms. And the only two studies that actually do exist on the island were actually conducted by, by my colleagues one of which is sitting right here, filming me. Um, all right, I'm gonna to have to do this, sorry. All right, so again, uh, I just wanna talk about one more study um, uh, that's relevant for this particular investigation. 
It was a study conducted by DAF. I hope I'm supposed to pronounce the apostrophe there. And it essentially ranked feeding preferences um, using the Bradley Terry model, which as far as I uh, have found in the literature is one of the best statistical analyses to prove, uh, again, uh, if, acro uh, if, excuse me, if the acanthaster do indeed have a preference for certain genuses over others. He found, unsurprisingly, that Acropora was number one in his study. It was done in a, uh, uh, an outbreak population of cots on the Great Barrier Reef. Again, that's consistent with the findings of Pratchett and, again, many other papers that have been published here in the Indo-Pacific. But what was really, really surprising in this study is that he found that Fingeids, or the Fingeidae, as we now know them, uh, again, were found as the second most preferred uh, genus, or in this case, family of corals. Uh, again, rather, rather interesting uh, observation, and it was relatively novel, given that in a, a publication by Orman back in the 1970s suggested that they were the least preferred genus of coral uh, by Acanthaster. At the very bottom of Diaz's uh, hierarchy, he put Parietes, again, one of the least preferred prey species, which is also, or prey genus, excuse me, um, which is also uh, incredibly important for this study as well, or at least relevant to it. All right, so our methodology for this study was uh, that we conducted roving diver surveys across the island of Koh Tao, where we were essentially looking for crown of thorn sea stars, um, uh, managing their populations is by pulling them off the reef. And of course, we weren't just doing that. We were taking a variety of different uh, 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 metrics and uh, pieces of data on them. We were looking at the coral genus that they were uh, predated, uh, predating upon when they were found. Also, we were looking at their size, their depth, their location, the collection effort that was involved, uh, the behavior. And this was all done over a four-year period, which is also of particular relevance for this study because most studies that focus on the crown of thorn sea star are normally only conducted over periods where they've reached outbreak levels. Again, this is a study that was rather uh, uh, stretched over a rather large space of time. So again, the dietary preferences that we're seeing here in this study could, are perhaps a little bit more indicative of their preferences uh, beyond, again, these outbreak populations. We also conducted over 224 surveys of seven reefs around the island, uh, uh, again, which were conducted regularly, and these seven reefs were used as sort of uh, a good uh, ambassador reefs or uh, characteristics at least of the reef topography around the island of Koh Tao. So again, we could measure the uh, predation preferences against, again, the uh, expression of certain coral genera, genera across these reefs. Sample size for our study uh, included roughly about 968 acanthaster individuals that were collected over this four-year period, so a rather large data set to look at. And these were the findings. These rather delicious looking pies um, represent, uh, uh, again, the acanthaster predation on the island of Koh Tao. That's expressed in the outer ring here. And the inner ring is uh, the uh, expression of certain genera that were found, again, across the 224 surveys that were conducted on the seven reefs around our island. So as you can see, the beautiful looking, tasty blueberry, uh, or sorry, blue colored uh, acroporid portion of this pie chart, 26% uh, of acroporids uh, were predated on. They made up of that high a percentage, at least of the uh, acanthaster diet, whereas rather fascinatingly, 29% uh, in pink made up, uh, uh, again, um, the, the vast majority of their diet, which was the, the Fingia day, which was, again, a really, really interesting uh, study, uh, again, and uh, relatively intriguing for this in, uh, investigation. Also of great note as well is this rather boring, uh, unappetizing looking gray color is representing parietes, uh, again, uh, which was listed, again, at the very bottom of Diaz's hierarchy and is, again, quoted in several studies as a very unpalatable species. We actually found that it was quite well expressed in the diets of crown of thorns around the island of Koh Tao. So, let's have a look at this by site. Uh, the seven sites that we surveyed, as you can see, um, uh, varied rather greatly. Again, the inner circle is uh, substrate composition. The outer ring is uh, crown of thorns predation. As you can see, the, th the three sites that really shared quite a lot of similarity were twins, Tao Tong, Shilok, and Ta Chao, where we all see an expression of Fingeidae quite well across their reefs. Uh, and as you can see, wherever we have Fingeidae expressed in a rather large abundance on these reefs, we see really high associated levels of Fingeid predation. Um, uh, again, in reefs like Tenote and Al Luk, that were uh, much higher gradient reef ecosystems, far steeper in their slopes, and uh, a lot more abundance and diversity in those areas. Again, that's denoted by that sort of brown looking section, which represents other. About 24 genera were found in that uh, category. Oh no, I've hit, a, I've hit a button. One second. Uh, okay, and uh, um, again, uh, we saw a, a really large uh, switch to essentially acroporid predation, which again 
is characteristic of these organisms. Uh, so what we did was we conducted a PCA analysis to essentially indicate to us what the relationship of prey preferences of COTS was with the abundance of coral genera across each of the sites surveyed. So first we of course had to do a scree, uh, a scree plot to see how well expressed our seven sites were across the two dimensions that we planned to plot them against. And as you can see, our, uh, our scree plot proved that 88.9% uh, uh, of the observations uh, were accounted for across the two dimensions that we'd express in our PCA analysis. And this is the PCA analysis, uh, uh, the results that we got from it. Again, this is essentially a projection of the seven sites. It's just a visualization uh, uh, that, that we can use as a way of essentially uh, drawing similarities between certain sites that we were again studying. So to note, now look, as I said, with the sites that had a high gradient uh, uh, reef ecosystems, they were quite uh, topographically complex, high expressions of coral genera. And as you can see, we see um, a, a rather uh, large preference in them uh, for acroporid. Uh, uh, whereas uh, in our sites like Twins and Shellock and Tacha, which had much lower radiant, uh, ooh, gr gradient, reef uh, uh, sorry, gradient reef ecosystems, we saw uh, much, much higher tendencies in uh, uh, fungeid predation, which is again a rather interesting observation. So, uh, in summation, this study has yielded intriguing observations in Acanthaster species, prey preferences, again, namely the uncharacteristically high predation of Fungea and Pariety genres, uh, which, which hasn't been observed, again, in, 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 uh, in the, the volumes that we observed them in, in, in many other studies. Oh, it keeps on switching slides. And with the correlation between uh, COT prey preference and coral diversity abundance, uh, uh, even though that they weren't significant in the linear regression analysis that we did across each of the sites, except for one, um, what we do plan on doing with this study is carrying it on further again with the volumes of data that we've collected and it keeps on skipping uh, uh, to essentially uh, assess the crown of thorns dietary preference and look at that against uh, coral fitness. Uh, again, what we, what we noticed is that many of the coral genera that were expressed highly in the diets of crown of thorns around our island are also some of the first to show, shine, throw, uh, show signs of thermal stress. Um, in, in warm waters. So again, uh, we think that there could be perhaps a, a more interesting uh, a relationship between, again, their preferences on our island and that metric. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Thank you so much for listening. And again, please ask me any questions. Thanks, Arnold. Uh, questions? They're mobile, but yes. still they're able to be predated by COTS because they can't move as fast as the COTS. They certainly can't move as fast as the COTS. COTS actually have a, oh, they, uh, they, they can't move as fast as Crown of Thorns sea stars. Uh, Fungeids move at incredibly slow rates. I can't remember the exact uh, speeds at which Fungeids move, but uh, by contrast to COTS, they are much slower movers on reef ecosystems. Um, uh, so, of course, to, to avoid predation uh, by crawling away slowly from a much faster, slow organism, again, uh, wouldn't have uh, accounted for much of their ability to avoid predation, unfortunately, but it's an interesting question. Any other questions? Um, yeah, they also have a, a, a low number of associated uh, uh, um, mutualistic symbionts, so it's theorized that, that might actually be one of the reasons why they're preferred, but not only that, uh, fungeid reefs are topographically really quite uncomplex, so uh, again, by contrast to, let's say, a high gradient reef ecosystem. So again, the fungeids there are actually easier to predate for the acanthasters, so again, uh, that, that, that also might explain the uh, predation preferences that we're observing there. Could just be easy pickings. Um, any other questions? One minute. Yes. Uh, you might have said, it might have missed it. Um, did you look at different direct kind of forms where they're observed? Did you look at the beach guard as well? Or we, we were looking specifically at whether or not they were feeding or not feeding. So again, acanthasters that were found on a coral but not feeding were not accounted for in the study. We were looking directly at corals that had exhibited stomach aversion on the corals where we were finding them. And again, uh, that accounted for a really large portion of the observations that we deserved. Close to 700 of the 966 cots that we observed, again, during the daytime, were found feeding. I believe it just skipped again. Um, but yes, any other questions? I think I might be up, I forgot, but yes? Yeah. One last question. Perfect. What do you think is the key difference between a kind of coral species that's targeted by COTS versus like leeches? Because they also uh, they incorporate that are introduced to the as well. And this is their relation uh, to the reef, more stresses and stuff. Sorry, do you mind repeating that question again? Uh, 
Well, that's exactly uh, one of the metrics that we're going to, again, continue on with this study. That's, that's uh, really where I'd like to take this investigation. Again, in many of the coral genera that we saw as most preferred, Pavona, Poslopora, Acropora, the Fungea, they're always some of the first to express signs of thermal stress when we have bleaching events on the island. And again, perhaps it has something to do with the chemical hormones that they're releasing into the water that are triggering the acanthaster preferences for these particular genera. But again, uh, hopefully I'll have a real answer for you again when again we dig into the statistical analyses of that and we will have that set up uh, hopefully soon before the paper's published, hopefully by the end of the year. Yes, thank you very much guys. Thank you for your time. Hey, uh, if you have more